So, if you want to monitor your AWS may be the EC2, RDS, or S3 buckets with a Zabbix, you can do that for free. The templates are already available and currently they are supported for the Zabbix version 6.2 and of course also for the 6.4 which will be released uh, soon enough. And uh, as far as I know it's going to be backported also to the Zabbix 6.0. So the only thing that you need to have to actually monitor your AWS is of course the Zabbix and I'm not go through the installation steps if you are new uh, to the Zabbix itself. You can just go zabbix.com download section or search in a YouTube for Zabbix server installation, you will find one of my videos where we do that in the details. But uh, basically, when you have your Zabbix up and running, first of all, you need the templates. And uh, if you're like me, who uh, upgraded to the Zabbix 6.2 from the previous versions, then keep in mind that templates do not uh, import automatically in in your previous Zabbix version, so you have to download them manually. And to do that, you need to find Zabbix GitHub page and go to the templates, then cloud, AWS, and you will find four templates. AWS underscore HTTP, then the separate ones for EC2, RDS, and S3. So the, the only difference between them is, let's say you can grab EC2 HTTP template, it works fine, but uh, the only difference here is that there is no low-level discovery. So you will have to manually enter uh, instance ID uh, for every EC2 machine that you want to monitor. So basically, if you have, let's say 1000 of uh, EC2 instances, you will have to manually create 1000 hosts and manually add 1000 different instance IDs to uh, perform the monitoring, which of course is not uh, optimal way, especially in the production environments when you have a lot of these instances. And uh, I haven't tested it, but I'm sure that the same actually applies for uh, RDS and S3. So I'm sure that uh, it will be basically manually for each instance that you want to monitor. So we are mainly interested in AWS HTTP, which will automatically discover all of our instances. And this will apply to all three EC2, RDS and S3 buckets. But uh, if you are interested only in EC2, as in my example, you can just disable the two other ones. So if you want to download a template from the GitHub and don't know how, then just uh, open it like this, click on the raw button and save as, and it will successfully save the YAML file. Then you can go to configuration templates, click import, and import the template that you just downloaded. Then from um, then we need to create a host, the first one. And in my case, it is AWS Discovery. As you can see, there are no interfaces because the monitoring is done by the HTTP requests. So through the API, it's not an agent monitoring. You don't, um, it's not necessary to install the proxy or agents or whatever to perform this monitoring. So just create a host and link this template that I was talking about AWS by HTTP. Then click on the host, click on the macros and uh, these are basically the only ones mandatory that you have to fill in and I will hide my keys just for the security purposes but let's talk like where you can find them so you need to go to your EC2 uh, sorry, you need to go to your AWS and basically find identity and access management. And I strongly recommend to just create a new user dedicated for this monitoring task, which in my case is this uh, Zabbix one. And then you need to define the policy. So click on the user and edit policy. Then you should click on the JSON and this is how it should look like. If you're questioning where can I find this, you can find this right in the GitHub. Again, going back to the template, AWS by HTTP, and you can just copy paste everything uh, to, to your IAM console and review policy, everything's good, right? Then we can go back. Um, 
then we need the security credentials. Security credentials, the access key, and there we have access key ID, just like I have here, access key ID. So basically this is the copy paste from here. And uh, the second parameter is the secret access key, which is visible only when you are creating the access key, then you just copy paste it where you need it. After that, there's no way for you to actually get this key. So if you forgot it or you lost it, then just delete the one that you have, create a new one, do the proper copy paste. And the second one, Third one, the last one is AWS region. So this applies to the EC2 instances. Like I, ha I have uh, two of them running right now and all of them are running in the US East, uh, US East one region. So these are three parameters, right? Access key ID, region and access key. After that, basically that's it. That's all you need. So we have three low level discovery rules. EC2 instance discovery, RDS instance discovery, and S3 buckets discovery. The only thing that you also need to keep in mind, uh, which I found out just now when I did the testing, which is November 26, whenever you're creating a new EC2 instance in AWS, you are going like, um, I don't, EC2 dashboard, launch instance, uh, I think through to here. Yeah, so you're choosing like the name and um, what will be the operating system, the instance type, so on, and just clicking add, you will have a prompt about like add additional tags. And uh, those are optional. So you can actually successfully create your EC2 instance without any tags. But if you do that, up till now, until it, it, it is fixed, the discovery of the instances will actually fail because currently in the official template, there is a check uh, for if there is no tags in, in the response of the XML, then throw exception that uh, failed response parse. Um, but yeah, the tags are optional. If you have some virtual machine, some EC2 without the tags, you can add them on the fly without adding any harm to your instances. Uh, just click in on the settings, then actions, uh, where it was, instance settings, manage tags, and I just added these ones just for the sake to my low-level discovery work successfully. So when everything is set up, uh, we have this EC2 discovery, which has host prototype, which means that for every EC2 instance that is going to be discovered, it will create a new host in the Zabbix and also add a new template AWS EC2 by HTTP, which is uh, this one, the one that I referred initially, which you can apply like only this one without AWS HTTP, but remember there's no discovery. So you have to manually add the instance ID and manually create a host for each EC2. However, if we are running discovery, then you can see these uh, or orange EC2 instance discovery, these hosts are created automatically. These hosts have the template AWS EC2 by HTTP and all the required parameters like the access key for the user that is used for the monitoring are automatically picked up from the AWS discovery template. And what kind of metrics are we actually getting? First of all, we're discovering all the instance alarms and instance volumes. And for each of these discovered settings, we have item prototypes like the state and the state reason in in case of the alarms and uh, quite a lot of data about the volumes. Aside of that, there are also some items that are not working with uh, low level discovery that are actually monitored uh, by default. As example, the CPU utilization, CPU balance, a lot of stuff about a CPU, a lot of stuff about the disks, EBS, uh, get metrics check and uh, metadata volumes info check network stuff like bytes in and out uh, status and uh, mostly that's it so those are actually quite a core metrics about your ec2 instance and uh, again i'm talking only about ec2 that was the purpose of my test but um, keep in mind that you can also monitor your rds and s3 buckets just uh, make sure that in that case you have all of these four templates down 
downloaded and actually imported in your Zabbix instance. Uh, if we would go to, let's say, monitoring latest data and uh, check for my hosts, let me try, um, I don't actually know which group they are in. So let's go here, latest data um like this apply and there we go so we're monitoring quite a lot of stuff uh some of the data is not coming yet because i basically set up everything like a couple of minutes ago and uh, low level discoveries for the volumes and uh, um the ec2 alarms just started and they have not checked uh, created out items yet but that data will appear a little bit later so there we go we also have a tags uh for for the items the data change like we can check the graphs of course we can also set up the triggers and be notified when one of our aws resources has some problems that we need to react to so that's mainly it thank you guys for watching hope you liked it hope it's it was helpful for you and we'll see you later in some next videos goodbye